Okay. Up next, we have our featured presenter, and I'd like I, I don't know who it is, just joking. Uh, so I'm, I'm pleased and, and honored to have Leslie Castellano uh, as our program today. And Leslie is a business owner, artist, teacher um, through Synapsis, uh, and uh, of course is a member of the city council. And Eureka is also a member of the executive committee of my, of my board. Um, and so therefore always gets a great positive introduction. Uh, for me, uh, if for no other reason than she's, you know, very much involved in my annual evaluation. Um, but uh, one of the things she's doing now, uh, because she's not busy enough doing all of the, the work that she already does, is she is now the executive director of the Ink People, um, a, a, a great program. And uh, some of you know Libby Maynard, who uh, was a founding member of the Ink People and recently um, retired after 42 years as, as executive director. So uh, Leslie has taken that over. I'm not exactly sure how she fits that in with everything else, but she'll probably let us know. So I'm gonna turn it over to Leslie and uh, just give her a warm welcome. Good morning, everyone. It's a real just honor and privilege to be here. I deeply appreciate the Rotarian sense of community and, and just your sense of doing good work um, throughout our region. So thank you and thanks for having me. Um, let's see, and thanks for the introduction, Greg, and in invitation. Um, so, so I imagine some folks are familiar with the Ink People, but some people may not be um, familiar with the Ink People because it, it's kind of a, I would say, a, a humble organization. It's one of those humble organizations that does a lot without, um, and sometimes you don't even know what the ink people are doing. Um, so we are an arts and culture organization. And as Greg said, with um, 42 years of supporting arts and culture throughout the region, we have a youth program, which is the Media Arts Resource Zone, um, a gallery, the Brenda Tuxford Gallery at our location on 627 Third Street in Eureka. Um, we're involved with state advocacy efforts for the arts. Um, just yesterday, I was in a meeting with, um, with a, a bunch of leaders throughout the state advocating for more funding for the arts in rural areas. Uh, we, we help sponsor the, culture, the cultural district in Eureka. We, um, you know, we, ju we just have a number of programs, including our Dreammaker program, which, um, which means that we fiscally sponsor over 100 different grassroots arts initiatives throughout the, the community. Um, I wanna lift up that program for just a minute because basically what we do is we give infrastructural support to to people who come in and, and they, they come into our office or they, you know, meet us on Zoom these days and, and say, you know, I have a dream or I have a vision for something good that can benefit the community, you know, through an arts and cultural lens. This can be anything from a fiscal responsibility program for, for artists and community members, to the, the street art festival, to a poet laureate program, to school programs, to numerous programs that lift up um, perspectives from other cultures to, to bring more visibility and, and acknowledgement of, of cultural pathways. Um, and through that, you know, we, we really support those organizations by, you know, again, teaching them, you know, accounting, um, grant writing. Just today I'm launching a grant writing training program for those programs. Um, you know, and, and we build interconnectedness amongst them because we know, as, as you know, that our community is better when people work together to lift one another up and to celebrate one another's dreams. Um, so, so that's the Dream Maker program. Um, over, we've been actually surprisingly busy during COVID, which I, I just want to let you all know that, you know, COVID has been but like for everyone, a rough time for artists as well. You know, many performers, many artists had their gigs canceled or had to put you know, parts of their careers on hold. So through that, we worked with Humboldt Area Foundation, the Wild Rivers Foundation to launch the Funds for Artists Resilience, which supported artist initiatives 
specifically designed to build community throughout the North Coast region. So there were um, projects happening in Del Norte County, Trinity County, and Humboldt County. Um, we had about um, 15 projects going on with, within Humboldt County. And uh, we also, um, you know, just do a lot of, you know, I, I do a lot of work around the relationships between economic sustainability and e economic well being throughout the region and the arts. Um, a lot of people, you know, they, they kind of, I think, well, I, I don't know, you know, how, how you see the arts, but, you know, I, I think there tends to, to have the sense of like the arts are an afterthought or the arts are what we do, you know, after everything else is done. And really, if, I think if most, most people here think about their lives, you know, and they think about what would happen without arts and culture, you know, life wouldn't, wouldn't be nearly as rewarding. You know, you know, I really believe that arts um, help us understand one another and help us, you know, build value across difference. And I think, you know, perhaps now more than ever, we need to understand how to communicate and how to see one another, even when we think or feel different things or come from different places. Um, the arts, of course, also help support tourism, um, help support community health, and, you know, and help attract new industries. For instance, you know, within the tech industry, most people who work in that industry choose where they live based on you know unfortunately you know not not based on you know like like the, the the maybe like what housing is like but you know what the cafes are like what the what the arts and culture community is doing so if we want to attract new industries you know to our community it really makes sense to support the arts and culture um and for me, you know, so as Greg mentioned, I come from an arts and culture background. I'm, uh, I create performances. I've practiced and taught aerial dance for a number of years. I also have a venue and space called Synapsis in Eureka, where we just renovated um, a one, almost 120 year old building um, to create a new kind of community center and all arts and culture space. And one of the reasons I deeply appreciate the Ink People is because 15 years ago, I, I came before the Ink People board um, and said, you know, I have, I have this vision to, to create a performing, performing art space, you know, and that often people, I think, don't take artists seriously, you know, because we tend to be the visionaries or we tend to, you know, maybe think outside the box. And the Ink People really said, Oh, wow, you know, they, they saw me, they listened to my idea and they, they thought it had merit, you know, the board at the time. And, and since then I've, I've just been a big fan and, you know, and now that program, you know, we're, we're really creating a, a kind of nexus point and um, route for, for community benefit here in Eureka. Um, the Ink People does serve artists and cultural initiatives throughout the county and throughout the region. Um, so, you know, through the Dream Makers, you know, we, there's, you know, just neat projects happening up and down the coast. And um, we also work collaboratively with other arts organizations. Um, something I appreciate is that, you know, there, there are possibilities of, of valuing what you know, someone else is doing like, like the Arcata Playhouse is, is a kind of a long time collaborator, collaborator. And I do a lot of work with, you know, Jackie and Lara and, and the folks there. And, and there's ways that through working together, we, we really do make our community a more vibrant place um, for all of us to live and, and participate in. Um, so that, that's my kind of spiel about the ink people. Uh, I could definitely talk more, but I also want to say, um, just a nod to our outgoing executive director, Libby Maynard, who, you know, was a real visionary for the arts and is a real visionary for the arts for, for two, 42 years. And on March 12th, we'll be having a celebration of her career actually here at Synapsis in, in Eureka, which is on Union, just off of Union, Union and Wabash. And we're putting on a, a street, an outdoor street festival um, with 
drumming and music and food carts and all, all the fun stuff, um, bringing joy to the streets here and, and lifting up just the good work of Living Maynard. So definitely I'll, let, I'll make sure Greg and Ian know about that so they can let you know when that festival is taking place. Um, I'm happy to answer questions or, you know, if there's anything you're curious about in terms of art, culture, you know, or regional well-being, happy to talk about that. Yes, Maggie, Thank you, amazing. Thank you very much, Leslie. Do we have any hands up? Great. I'll ask you a question. <laughs> um, uh, so you, you talk about the Dream Maker Project, which is amazing. And I, I sort of first crossed paths on it when they were working with someone to buy the Annie B. Ryan house and create the, the little mini park and rest, restore the house there. And that actually was a, a project that, that the Dream Makers uh, project supported. Um, so it's pretty diverse what you do there at Dream Makers. Um, I guess a simple question is then, you know, is there a... a What's the, how do you, how does one access that? Do you just wander sure. in and tap on the window, or <laughs> you know that that does happen? Uh, we, you know we do have a, an office down at six two seven Third Street, but it often begins with an email or a phone call, and sometimes you know people in other other organizations point artists in our direction. I was just talking with um, someone from Humboldt Area Foundation. Um, a couple of days ago who were saying, we send so many programs to you, you know, people who come to Humboldt Area Foundation and say, I have a big idea. And, you know, it, and some of that, right, is really that efficiency. And, you know, rather than having to have 100 different bookkeepers supporting all of these, you know, kind of grassroots initiatives, we, you know, we can do that all together. And that, you know, and we can network those organizations, those initiatives together with one another so they can support one another. Um, yeah, so feel free to reach out to me, call the office. Uh, Randy, I see you have a hand up. Uh, yeah, thank you. I'm just um, wondering what's going on with the National Endowment of the Arts uh, and does uh, Ink People uh, benefit from the NEA? I just haven't heard anything about the NEA in recent years. Sure, great question. You know, um, and the, the NEA round of grant, grants is currently open and we're currently working on an application to one. So it's a, it's a timely question. Um, we do receive, you know, it, it's going, the NEA is going, and, and this year there's hopefully more funding being awarded to the NEA, you know, it kind of depending on the, the swings of, you know, national politics goes one way or another. But um, we received funding last year in their last round of grants that specifically helped fund staffing for the DreamMaker pro program. And so through that, that funds some of the, like the grant training I'm about to, it's a five week grant training I'm about to do for the Dream Makers that helps funds initiatives like that. And, you know, and just all of the, the in, infrastructural support. So I'm, I'm definitely grateful that that, you know, that national funding is coming here locally to our community as well. Thank you. Yes, I have a question. So a few minutes ago, you mentioned that uh, some of your referrals for few people with ideas come from Humboldt Area Foundation. Do those uh, tend to come with uh, funds to back them uh, through some of the endowments that are set up through HAF? Um, you know, we there isn't currently an arts and culture endowment. They did fund the funds for artist resilience. Um, and, it, you know, as you know, as you may know, over the last year or so, HAF has you know, come out with a different and a new strategic plan. Um, you know, again, with, with deep appreciation for all that HAF does, they haven't centered the arts within that new plan. And so that's something I'm, I'm actually conversing with people in the community that I think there's space to perhaps create some sort of endowment or ongoing fund for the arts. So that we can really make sure that these like myriad benefits keep continue. And not only that, that, that have more, you know, just everyday, everyday sustainability. Every time I visit your website, uh, I, I continually notice the ongoing addition of partners in the community and uh, different types of artistic outlets uh, that Ink People 
facilitates and coordinates to, at, at what point, uh, at this point, how many different types of uh, community arts outlets are you supporting and, and organizing with? I know, well, I mean, there's about 112 dream makers. Um, and then, you know, so, so that keeps us pretty busy. Um, and then we have our own core program, such as the Media, media Arts Resource Zone, um, Youth Program, the Gallery, um, you know, there's, there's several other core programs there. So we're, we stay, <laughs> we stay quite busy. Right, such a creative community. It, any other uh, questions or comments from the, the group here? Okay. I, so, I uh, just, uh, I just want to say that it, it's so amazing, the Dream Makers Project, because uh, I've, I've seen people, I've known people who have had ideas or wanting to get started and, and they just need a little help. They need some guidance and they need a, they need a nonprofit or they need a structure to have donations come to them. Um, and, and to start your own nonprofit when you're just starting out is like, that would sink anyone's, sink anyone's creativity. They would lose their will to live if they had to do that. So, um, I really appreciate that you create that format for folks to to get started on their creativity or, or, or bring it, move it up a step because it's just, it's so complicated otherwise. So I really appreciate that. Thanks, Maggie. It, it does make a huge difference. You know, I ha we had a program coming that I was just meeting with yesterday that's supporting children who are, you know, in the, um, who are, recently adopted, you know, and, and making sure that there's wraparound services that include art, art and culture activities to support them. And they're coming, you know, eventually they want to be their own nonprofit and we support that and help with that as well. But this, this is allowing them to, to get started earlier and to receive some funding so they can really start directly implementing program in the, in the community, actually starting, you know, next week, right? So, so with that, it, it does help organizations get a start. Well, great. So you, you had mentioned uh, at the very beginning that, uh, you know, it, when it's possible, many of us pick the places where we choose to live. Um, if we have that privilege to sink in with our artistic interests and, um, you know, it, it's really not a home until those blank walls have art on them. And it's really not a home until there's music playing in the home. And it's really not a home until the, the little trinkets and objects that uh, you bring home from the community that give you joy and nourishment to your soul. Uh, it, it's all about art. So you're right. So many of us think of it after work, but it really is at the forefront of our lives to, to have art as, as an important part of our lives. So thank you for uh, leading the Ink people and all, all that all the members there do for the artists in our community. It is it is desperately needed and highly valued. So thank you very much. In, uh, you. in honor of you uh, presenting here, you heard earlier, we got a letter from the Wheelchair Foundation. We, we make a donation in our presenter's name. So there'll be a donation to the Wheelchair Foundation in your name for folks that uh, could not otherwise afford a wheelchair. So thank you again for presenting today. Thank you so much for having me.